Hey guys, what's up? By Sectatron here from One Hive Gazette. Here with the next video, and today we are recapping One Hive Genesis versus Reddit Omega. Um, it's kind of a recap, kind of showing some of these awesome attacks, and also showing uh, the final attack and just how close this war was. So let's get right into the to uh, the video here. Um, you can see that it was 103, 103. We won on percentage. Uh, they weren't able to quite match us. We had a uh, Town Hall 11 and Town Hall 12 putting up the percentage there. I think they, um, on one of these bases, they only had a 10. So sometimes the 10 V12s don't turn out to really help that much if it comes down to percentage. So anyway, let's show some of these attacks. First, I want to show one of their hits. I always like showing a few hits uh, from the opposing clan just to show some respect. Um, and, and it adds to the content. It's good attacks. Might as well show it. Um, Brad Piff, um, possibly related to Brad Pitt, and uh, attacking Comfort V-Dub here. And uh, this was a very interesting attack. It, it was a clutch attack. At this point, it looked like they had a good chance of winning because we were yet to get a 12v12, and this put them at, well, the 103. It gave them um, all the, everything cleared with the top, um, with two of the of the 12s just two stars so it put them in a good position we ended up matching it you'll see those uh, that the attack later but what i thought was interesting is didn't get a whole lot from the blimp got the queen but didn't get either of these expos which, which i assume he was hoping to get but it's an interesting idea bringing two dragons and then this raging them up out of the blimp Typically, balloons are better if you're just going for defenses, but if you want to get the queen as well, you can throw in the dragon. Um, maybe even a dragon and like four balloons would have been a good idea because the balloons are much better at grabbing those defenses, such as the expos, um, especially under rage. But anyway, the dragons at least got the queen. Then, very good value there, the Sui heroes to get the town hall because the town hall is so important. Um, this base maybe should have protected it a little bit better because any way you can easily take out the town halls, uh, especially with like a suicide hero move like that, going to be very valuable for you because it otherwise forces you to use your Grand Warden's ability over it when we're talking balloons and stuff because it has that damage upon uh, being destroyed. So anyway, the balloons move through. Very nice pathing. Um, worked out uh, so the balloons spread out here. Don't clump up on any wizard towers. Nice little heal for the back end. Get those balloons in it as they go over the inferno. And yeah, everything just kind of uh, goes down. A few back end balloons as well. So good stuff here. This was a nice hit. And they only had like two 12v12 attempts this war. Maybe more, but... It, it, not many, maybe just two actually. So they really capitalized and put up a good war. Um, I have a patron in uh, Reddit Omega, so a shout out to him. He knows who he is. I won't say his name if he doesn't want me to. I'm not sure, but uh, I was thinking about attacking his base too, but it just didn't work out. I didn't have a good plan for it. Uh, so anyway, this was a nice hit. We'll fast forward to the end here, and then we will uh, move on to the next attack. Uh, this next one was the last minute we needed a three star we were down by um one triple so we needed the three star to match them on stars we had the percentage so it was one of those situations where it's, there's only one attack going on in the last minute sometimes there's multiple attacks but i think it was just the one attack going on everyone's watching it I'm sure, i wasn't actually on for it but i'm sure um spectator spots were full and it was this attack decided the war and you guys will see how close it really was here um, this is dub attacking you guys have heard him on the channel before in the town hall 12 12 base building video um, so he comes through with just a classic witch bowler which is on the flanks and notice those giants to trigger the giant bombs by the Teslas because people so often to kill witches are gonna put giant bombs between defenses on the outside. And because the skeletons don't trigger them, they often just get the witches or the bowlers. But if you drop giants, the giants go out ahead, almost like the skeletons, and they will trigger the giant bombs. That way you save your uh, flanks as they move through. But you'll see things get a little bit awkward here. Um, the troops start to thin out. The jump spell was, I guess, late. Um, should have been down earlier, probably. Uh, the town hall is still up. Never good having a back-end town hall to deal with, because you can see it just goes, goes crazy on his queen and his warden here. Um, jump is finally down. Not sure 
why he was holding it, but hey, I won't I won't uh, complain too much. This attack was so clutch for us. Uh, uses the uh, queen with the rage to take out the town hall. Pops the ability. The queen, as always, gets weird as she kind of rounds the corner there, and she's not going to get the inferno, but check this out. The warden turns around here. I think he's out of range of the inferno. No, he's in range, but the skeletons are tanking, and he takes down the inferno. Now, this might have still tripled anyway, but um, if the inferno was up, but even though it's just a single, I mean, he was low on skeletons, only three witches spawning them. So the, the cannon and the Tesla here are barely being tanked by these skeletons. Like, I think it would have been a fail if the Inferno was still up because you can see there was just enough skeletons to get through there without the witches being targeted too much. The healer helped for sure on, on the outside. Then we'll fast forward here. Um, there was about 11, 12 seconds, I think, remaining. So it wasn't like barely got it in terms of time, but... You guys could have saw that, like that attack could have gone so much differently, but a nice clutch hit to dub, um, good, good stuff. We will take a look at one 11 v 11 and uh, two 10 v 10s. Now we're kind of transitioning into some of the more weird, interesting attacks um, that I wanted to show with some uh, unusual stuff, things you guys might not see, and here's one, a hole in the base. I feel like it was such a gaping hole, it, it seems like it had to be intentional, but it's weird to think that someone would actually put a hole in their base. Maybe it wasn't. I, you know, I'm going to assume it's not intentional, that hole, because it's the eagle is there, and was there an inferno there as well? Yeah, I think so. Um, and I just can't see anyone doing that in a, like, to actually try to defend well. So, yeah, that must have been a hole, I'm, I'm thinking, because it's it's just barely there. You can see um, the Inferno and the Eagle's not quite far over enough. So anyway, drops in a few Valks and a Rage. Um, this base, to its credit, uh, held up against, I want to say, either three or four total attacks. So there was several fails on it, at least, meaning um, it did its job. So, you know, maybe if this was an intentional hole you know what, more power to you. You did get tripled, but you took up some attacks, and our 11s have been very, very solid. A lot of bases were freshed this week and uh, weeks before. So anyway, things moving through. Um, just a classic Witch Bowler. Not a whole lot in the middle of the base, you'll notice. A lot on the outside, so much so that the Warden just walks on the outside. That's pretty unusual. But fortunately, there's enough in there to get that Inferno, clear out kind of the main insides of the base, and once you do that, um, the, the flanks can clean everything up, especially with the queen and healers on one side, very powerful. Then the warden and these witches on the other side, kind of a weird situation, you know, when do you use the warden's ability? Um, I guess it turns out to be as that mortar starts to lock onto the witches and the archer tower actually locks onto the warden, so it didn't have much of a choice. Had to pop the warden there, and uh, he kind of protects those troops for a little bit. Anyway, we'll fast forward. Everything moves around. That wizard tower is just awkwardly left up, but um, it will go down at the end here. Um, so we have two 10v10s to show to kind of finish off some of these nice attacks. Uh, we'll show theirs first. I think they're both dragon attacks, and I want to. I was thinking about making a, a video just for dragons, but if we continue to see it, I'll, I'll be forced to. For now, we'll just throw it into this video. Uh, first is. Uh, these air defenses all on one side of the base and if you're a Town Hall 11 or a Town Hall 12 you might be using Electro Dragons on this type of base but just because you're a Town Hall 10 doesn't mean you still can't uh, use some type of dragon so uh, interesting raged wall breakers doesn't have enough it turns out to actually open anything up beyond that one compartment but a very, I don't want to say lucky, but kind of lucky funnel here. Everything goes in because the CC troops pull them in. So that works out nicely. Things actually come back around right here. Um, so easily could have gone very uh, bad because if those air defenses are up, this is likely a fail. But has the bowlers, has the queen. Uh, he'll get some good value with this queen's ability in just a moment. And then from there, it's just sending in the dragons and uh, working its way around the base. Has a battle blimp as well, which will definitely do a good job soaking up traps. Because that's one thing you often have to just deal with is just because you can get all the air defenses doesn't mean you're getting rid of 
um, the seeking air mines, especially the red bombs. So having something to soak that up and not having to use a lava hound, but using the battle blimp uh, is very nice. So I guess the way he used it actually kind of went behind his troops. I would have used it in front to kind of soak up the traps, but it worked out fine. Electro dragon in the CC, we see that um, here and there. It's a good a good option because if you can get some good touching buildings, not even touching, but like one tile between them, it'll get some bounces for you. And then has these freezes. You gotta freeze if you know, especially your, your electro dragons being targeted. Um, it's very nice to freeze that single inferno because you don't want it just tearing through your dragons. So you can see how effective the E dragon is right here as it moves through the base, and the queen is still up somehow, some way. I'm not even sure where she went after the initial kill squad push. Um, but she's alive and she will finish off the town hall. All right, one more attack to show and then we'll wrap this up. Uh, going over to number 31. This was an attack I helped plan a little bit. Um, took a few shots to get this right, but gotta respect the plan here. Probably my favorite Town Hall 10 attack from this war. Not that I've, I, I've watched all of them very briefly, I think, or at least I've kind of, yeah, I kind of dip in, see what the army comp was. Can't say I watch all the attacks. Um, that might just take too long. But simultaneously, it can't even fit on the screen almost. We got the queen up top. We got the wall wrecker at six. And basically what the idea is, he's going to go in and take out Inferno and two air defenses on both sides. So on the bottom, the wall wrecker has Valks, rages them up, gets that. On the top, queen sets the funnel. Um, Suicide Queen because it's a Lava Hound, then the King comes in, Wall Break, use the King and a few Valks, takes that out. Now it's perfect pathing for the Dragons coming from the left here uh, to get all, all these buildings taken out very quickly. And uh, you'll see has the Archer to pull away the Hound, just drawing it away with these Archers. And that was very important to the attack. Th this was close on time as dragon attacks often are. They're just very slow through the base. And if, especially if it's a phased attack like this where you have multiple like kill squad components, um, these dragons were down late. He could have got these dragons going much earlier, I think, which would have helped. But like I said, oftentimes an issue. Good archer, it's gonna pull the hound away. So it, even, it won't be any type of issue because there's no buildings over there. Um, the dragons are coming from the other side. This freeze was pretty bad. We were yelling at him while he was attacking for dropping that freeze. Only got like the uh, wizard tower, but the next one got the sweepers and the queen, which was good. And right here, dragons closing in, has the heal and the rage to go with it. So getting all the dragons in this spell, very important you keep your dragons together. Like they, one of the most, they, the, the dragons have to be controlled almost more than any other troop. You gotta get them going through the base in a very funneled way because they can easily go to the outside and just ruin your attack. A few back end balloons here to finish things off and just minions, doesn't have much time. Like I said, if you watched at the beginning, uh, it was close to three minutes when the first troop was dropped. So good stuff to Kong Thing there and we will uh, wrap up this video. Thanks for watching, hope you guys liked it. And um, I will be working on getting the Town Hall 11 and Town Hall 10 and maybe even Town Hall 9 base building guides out as soon as I can. I know I started and then I just didn't follow up on that series, but it just takes a lot of work. I'll try to plan some times with people to record, but we'll get it done and uh, that, that should be helpful for you guys. Good war to Reddit Omega and we have a bye week next week, but we look forward to a good war after that. I believe against Dark Looter Z, possibly even streaming the end of it. So. All that coming up. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys later. Bisectatron out.